Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. My name is Atsaf Parekh and here are the top stories of the day. The United Nations Security Council has finally adopted a resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. This was after the U.S. did not veto the measure. This marks a significant divergence in Washington's stance on the Israel-Hamas war. So far, the U.S. has unconditionally supported Israel, vetoing measures unfavorable to Tel Aviv. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has retaliated to America's change in stance. He cancelled a high-level delegation's visit to Washington following the U.S. abstention. In Jordan, police scuffled with demonstrators walking towards the Israeli embassy in Amman. They were marching in support of Gaza. The protesters chanted slogans and waved Palestinian and Jordanian flags. Meanwhile, the police tried to push them back from the heavily fortified embassy building. The United Nations aid chief, Martin Griffiths, plans to step down at the end of June this year. Griffiths said he is stepping down from his position due to health reasons. He has headed the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs since 2021. In Haiti, armed gangs set fire to several vehicle garages in the capital, Port-au-Prince. At least 100 cars parked in several garages were torched in the arson attack. The attacks also targeted mattress and, and furniture warehouses, as well as a building that housed a local court. This comes as Haiti reels under surging gang violence. Basiru Diomaye Faye is set to become Senegal's next president. This was after his main rival, Amadou Ba, conceded defeat. Provisional results showed that Faye bagged around 53.7% of the votes. With this potential win, Faye will become Africa's youngest ever president. A convoy of tractors drove outside Britain's parliament yesterday. They were protesting against post-Brexit trade deals and what they called substandard food imports. The farmers are demanding that the British government enforce more accurate food labelling and take steps to improve the country's food security. The rally follows protests by farmers across Europe against competition from cheaper imports. New Zealand has accused China of hacking into its parliamentary network in 2021. It accused hackers linked to the Chinese government of launching a state-sponsored operation. This comes a day after American and British authorities also accused China of hacking. They have announced a set of criminal charges and sanctions against seven hackers, all believed to be living in China. The hackers allegedly targeted US officials, journalists, pro-democracy activists and the UK's election watch. Dog. Hong Kong's leader, John Lee, defended the city's new national security law in a press conference this morning. He accused foreign governments of criticizing the law for their own political interests. Lee said, and I quote, They will continue to attack our law despite the very fact that their own countries have more stringent laws. Japan's cabinet has approved a plan to sell fighter jets to other countries. This marks Japan's latest move away from its post-war pacifist principles. Tokyo has long restricted arms exports under the country's pacifist constitution. However, it has rapidly taken steps to deregulate amid rising regional and global tensions, especially from China. Pakistan's second largest airbase, the PNS Siddiqui, has come under attack. Reports said gunfire and explosions continued for over three hours. The Majid Brigade, the armed wing of the banned Balochistan Liberation Army, has claimed responsibility for the offensive. This marks the second attack by the Majid Brigade within a week. Last week, they infiltrated Pakistan's Gwadar port. Two Pakistani soldiers and eight terrorists were killed in last week's attack. The governor of the U.S. state of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has signed a new social media bill. It will ban social media accounts for children under the age of 14 and require parental permission for 14 and 15-year-olds. 
if it withstands potential legal challenges, this will become one of America's most restrictive social media bans for children. A Russian gold mine where 13 people are trapped is likely flooded. Officials said that surveillance cameras showed water 153 meters down a drilled well. The cavities are being explored using video cameras lowered into the mine through purposefully drilled wells. The miners have been trapped since last week. Brazil's foreign ministry has summoned the Hungarian ambassador. This is to explain why former President uh, Jair Bolsonaro spent two nights at the Hungarian embassy. Last month, Bolsonaro reportedly stayed at the embassy just days after the police confiscated his passport. In climate news, the European Union's nature restoration policy is on the verge of collapse. The bill proposes that EU countries introduce measures to restore nature on a fifth of their land and sea by 2030. The law was supposed to be put to vote in the EU's parliament yesterday. However, the vote was cancelled after eight bloc members withdrew support for the legislation. Meanwhile, another EU environmental law is facing hurdles. A group of EU countries have written to the European Commission to revise the bloc's new anti-deforestation law. The law is expected to come into effect by the end of the year. It aims to remove deforestation from the supply chains of agricultural products sold in the region. The law bans EU farmers from cultivating on deforested lands. In recent days, the bloc has faced several farmer protests against its proposed climate laws. A winter storm has blanketed the U.S. state of Minnesota. It has caused over 400 road crashes, resulting in at least one fatality and multiple injuries. The blizzard has led to school closures and flight delays in the state. Some parts of Minnesota have reportedly received over 20 centimeters of snowfall. Massive forest fires are raging in Mexico. 58 wildfires started in 15 drought-stricken states yesterday. Over 1,200 hectares of land have been affected. The fires have killed livestock and charred houses, but no residents have been hurt so far. Glaciers in New Zealand are shrinking faster. This is according to the latest Snowline survey by government scientists in the country. Their ice is melting at an accelerating rate, as New Zealand has been experiencing severe heat over the past decade. India is expected to receive more than the average amount of rainfall during its monsoon season. This is according to the weather agency, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Climate Center. The agency has said that it expects Indian weather to smoothly shift to the La Nina pattern. La Nina refers to the periodic cooling of the ocean surface in the central Pacific. It typically brings abundant rainfall in India during the monsoon season. Canada's maple syrup reserve has hit a 16-year low. This is the world's only such reserve. Located in Quebec, it is designed to hold 60 million kilograms of maple syrup. But now only about 3 million kilograms are left in the reserve. Experts blame warmer weather, which has disrupted production. Canada's maple syrup industry accounts for 75% for of the world's maple syrup production. On to business and tech news. U.S. plane maker Boeing's CEO, Dave Calhoun, is stepping down. Boeing has said that Calhoun will leave his position by the end of the year. The firm has also announced the departure of the board chair, Larry Kellner, and the head of Boeing's commercial plane business, Stan Deal. This comes as Boeing faces a major safety crisis. The most significant incident took place in January, when a door blew out mid-air from a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet. German airline Lufthansa's bid for a stake in Italy's ITA Airways will likely face stiff competition. This is according to the European Union's antitrust regulator. It added that the deal can lead, uh, can lead to higher air ticket prices in the region. Lufthansa has proposed to buy a 41% stake in the Italian state-owned carrier ITA. 
The New York Stock Exchange is planning to delist shares of electric vehicle maker Fisker. This comes after the firm's share prices collapsed to 13 cents in the last few days. Fisker is going through a financial crisis. The firm has paused production and is looking to raise more funds. Yesterday, the EV maker said that talks to get financial support from a major automaker had collapsed. WeWork's co-founder Adam Newman has proposed to buy back his stake in the office space startup. Newman had to step down from the firm in 2019. This was amid a financial crisis at WeWork triggered by heavy debt. At the time, Newman also sold his stake in the company. However, he has now proposed buying back his stake for $500 million. Banking giant Citigroup is reportedly in the final phase of, re of its restructuring process. The firm's CEO, Jane Frazier, has told employees that the current phase will see over 5,000 job cuts. The impacted employees will be informed this week. Citigroup has been going through a large organizational overhaul. Under this, the firm has laid off over 20,000 workers. Meanwhile, Dell Technologies is also reducing its workforce. The number of impacted employees has not been made public. The firm has said that the layoffs are part of a cost-cutting initiative. The program also includes limited new hirings and uh, reorganizing current employees. Swedish telecom equipment maker Ericsson is laying off about 1,200 employees in the country. This represents over 8% of the firm's total workforce in Sweden. The layoffs are part of cost-cutting cost measures as the firm faces lower sales. Ericsson has said that it expects its sales of its uh, 5G equipment to slow down in 2024. The EU's antitrust regulator has launched a probe against Apple, Google and Meta platforms. The regulator will be investigating whether or not these firms have breached the bloc's new Digital Markets Act. The act came into effect earlier this month. It lays down strict rules for tech firms to ensure fair market competition. At least three class action lawsuits have been filed against Apple in the US. The lawsuits accuse the firm of inflating the cost of its products and monopolizing the smartphone market. This comes, this, these come as Apple is already facing an antitrust case filed by the US Justice Department. A US court has rejected a lawsuit brought by the social media firm X. X, formerly known as Twitter, has had sued a US-based hate speech watchdog called the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Elon Musk's firm accused the group of creating false and misleading reports against X. However, a US judge has dismissed the case. He said that it is clear that the lawsuit was filed just because the watchdog criticized Musk's company. Moving to sports, we'll start with cricket and the IPL. The Royal Challengers Bengaluru beat Punjab Kings by four wickets in yesterday's match. Punjab Kings were restricted to 176 in the first innings, chasing a target of 177. RCB lost their skipper Faf Duplessis in the initial overs. However, star batter Virat Kohli came to the rescue and scored an unbeaten 77 to help RCB overcome the early scare. India's cricket board, the BCCI, has announced the second half of the IPL schedule. The qualifier one and eliminator will take place in Ahmedabad on May 21st and 22nd respectively. Chennai will host the second qualifier of the tournament on May 24th. The, also the final of the tournament is at the Chepok Stadium on May 26th. In football, Brazilian forward Vinicius Jr. broke into tears while talking about the racial abuse he continues to face in Spain. He said the constant racist remarks he suffers in La Liga suck out the joy of playing football. Vinicius said, that, said this during a press conference ahead of a Brazil versus Spain friendly. Last season, La Liga reported at least 10 abusive incidents involving Vinicius. Argentine forward Angel Di Maria received a death threat at, at his hometown Rosario yesterday. Local media reported that the threat was delivered in a note and left in front of a private neighborhood where his family stays. 
Di Maria was threatened with death if he returned to Rosario. This comes a week after Di Maria, who currently plays for the Portuguese club Benfica, said he would like to end his career at his boyhood club Rosario Central. Former Brazilian footballer Dani Alves was released from a prison in Barcelona yesterday. Alves posted bail of over $1 million to secure his release. He was convicted of raping a woman in a nightclub in Spain in 2022. Alves will be on provisional release which he, while he appeals his conviction. South Korean football player Son Joon Ho has been released by China. This was announced by the South Korean Foreign Ministry yesterday. Son had been detained in China since May 2023. According to China's Foreign Ministry, he was held on the suspicion of accepting bribes. Indian tennis star Rohan Bopana and his Australian partner Matthew Abden have advanced to the men's doubles quarterfinals at the Miami Open. The duo secured a 7-5-7-6 hard-fought win against Hugo Nice and Jan Zielinski. Bopana and Abden, who are the reigning champions of the Australian Open, won 84% of their first serve points. The men's world number two, Carlos Alcaraz of Spain, has advanced to the round of 16 at the Miami Open. He beat French veteran Gael Monfils 6-2, 6-4 yesterday. Monfils was coping with the Spaniards' power shots until he hurt his ankle in the fifth game. This allowed Alcaraz to blaze past Monfils. Alcaraz's next opponent is Lorenzo Musetti of Italy. Andy Murray sustained an ankle injury during his third round match at the Miami Open. Murray said that it might keep him out of court for an extended period. The injury came late in the third set, causing Murray to drop his racket and scream in pain. He, continue, he returned to the court to finish the match but lost to Thomas Machak. Women's world number one Igor Shiontek has crashed out of the Miami Open. The pole was knocked out by Russian Ekaterina Alexandrova 6-4-6-2 in their fourth round clash. The 16th seeded Russian was on attacking mode right from the start and managed to subdue the world number one. With Shiontek's exit, the WTA tournament is now without any of the top three seeds in the quarterfinals. In entertainment news, U.S. Homeland Security officials raided multiple properties of rapper Sean Combs, popularly known as Diddy. The investigation is reportedly part of a sex trafficking probe. In 2023, Combs' former girlfriend accused the rapper of being involved in sex trafficking. Anne Hathaway made a shock statement in an interview. She said director Christopher Nolan came to her rescue like a quote-unquote angel after no one was offering her new roles in 2013. At the time, Hathaway faced severe criticism on social media for her Oscar win for Les Miserables. The shooting for season 3 of Euphoria is temporarily on hold. According to HBO, the creators are still working on the script of the upcoming season. Meanwhile, they have allowed their in-demand cast to pursue other opportunities. Actors like Zendaya and Jacob Elordi have starred in the previous seasons of Euphoria. Actor and comedian Tiffany Haydish revealed that she has been sober for over two months. Haydish was arrested twice last year over the suspicion of drinking under the influence. She said that her real struggle is not with alcohol or drugs, but with eating healthy amounts of meat and candy. Oscar-nominated actor Dave Patel premiered his directorial debut film Monkey Man in London. The film is an action thriller which he co-wrote, produced and starred in. The story is set in a fictional Indian city which revolves around the Hindu deity Hanuman. Monkey Man will hit theatres on the 3rd of April. Killian Murphy has been roped in by Universal Pictures for an upcoming film. He will reportedly star in and produce the adaptation of Mark A. Bradley's Blood Runs Coal. The story is set in the late 1960s in coal mines and follows a shocking assassination that altered the course of American labor unions. Penn Badley's serial killer persona will return to the screens again. The actor has starred sh uh, shooting for the finale uh, season of You. 
The shooting is underway in, the, in New York City. The release date is yet to be announced. X-Men 97 has crossed a mark of 4 million views in the first week of its release, according to its streamer Disney+. Plus. X-Men 97 is a follow-up on the X-Men the Animated Series, series uh, which aired from 1992 to 1997. Actors Cat Grimm and Alaren Tate have joined the cast of the upcoming Michael Jackson biopic. The film is scheduled to release on the 18th of April. Tate will play the role of Motown Records founder who signed Jackson's band in 1968, while Grimm will be seen as a singer and actor Diana Ross, who Jackson held in high regard. A group of graffiti artists in Peru created one of the largest murals in the capital, Lima, in honor of the late Dragon Ball Z creator Akira Toriyama. At least 45 artists worked on the mural that, ha that is 110 meters long and 6.5 meters high. Over 300 liters of paint and 500 cans of spray paint were used during the process. The mural uh, painting took 11 days to come to life. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.